evening, Uganda. Welcome to the show on the spot. My name is Patrick Kamara. Uganda is a country that has beautiful programs and beautiful policies. In fact, many countries in the region sometimes come to study the policies and the programs of Uganda. Our problem is when money is appropriated by parliament, utilization of that money, sometimes that's where the problem lies. Programs are started, but programs are not done so well according to the expectations of the people of Uganda and those who write the policies. Tonight, my guest is the Minister of State for Finance in charge of economic monitoring, whose job it is to look into that issue of how projects and programs of Uganda are being done. And that is the Honorable Peter Ogwang. Honorable Peter Ogwang, thank you so much for joining us this evening. And uh, I'm happy you had time to come and, and maybe talk to us and have some questions answered. Uh, the people of Uganda have watched you several times as you try to do your job. Um, I just want to begin with a general question. When you move around the country, in terms of implementing government projects and programs, what is your conclusion? First, I want to make a slight correction. My name is Peter Guang, Minister of State, Officer of the President, not Officer for Minister, Officer of the President, charged with economic monitoring. My mandate is to monitor the implementation of both local and central government programs and my mandate is also to be a link between the private sector and the president. My mandate also is directly to look at the performance of the economy, which it gives me to write an independent opinion to the president. Sometimes, of course, I'm happy you've talked about finance. I have a technical team in my office where we can be able to, whatever finance has given to each the president, we are able to give an opinion, which we feel in our opinion is a correct way on how to do things. Now, to the real issues. It's true, like you've correctly said, government appropriates money every financial year. That money has work plans and it's budgeted for. What I normally do and what we're beginning to do, ever since I took over office, I had a meeting and got guidance from the President in line with my mandate that we've been having paper accountability for long. But what we should now begin to equate and relate what is on paper, whether it's what is on the ground. And I want to confirm to you that that's why there's a challenge, with due respect. So why do we find that challenge, yet money has been sent, and yet money is sent on a clear program with this uh, you know, mechanism of how money should be utilized? Why should that be a challenge? The problem is us leaders, and I'm one of them. If I don't talk about myself, then I'll not be honest with the viewers who are watching us out there. First, I want to ask these are, I want to tell the viewers this. If you look at where we come from, all, all districts in the country, we have leadership in those respective districts. Beginning with the member of parliament who is both Kampala and down there, we in charge of a constituency. We have the chairperson LOC5 with the executive, paid money by government. We have the district councils who pass plans at that local level and approve them and also approve budgets. We have committees of council. We have sub-county leaders, chairman LOC3 and the executive of LOC3 and councillors at the parish level. So when now we come to say, why should we begin to see projects of government being mismanaged? It gives you a position that are all these leaders doing what they ought to do? And if they were doing, would we be having a situation where you go to an area and you see a mismanaged project, you see a non-existent project, and yet all these offices are there. That's why I want to say that the problem of this country and the problem of Uganda, we leaders must take responsibility to a big extent. For instance, I was, I've been a member of parliament now for 10 years. I want to confirm today before my viewers here that till I came to economic monitoring, my role has been at a macro level. What is missing in the oh, it yes? What is missing at the constituents to begin with? Because I'm, they, 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 they represent them. Ah, there's a problem of here. We need more money. We need what? That is what I've been pushing. But going to check what the money I appropriate is doing has been a big issue. Like now you talked about oversight at the parliamentary level as a member of parliament. Most times we look at we look at what the auditor general has given us. Are you getting me? But what I'm finding today on the ground, because I can also go back to the main systems of government. We have a chief administrative officer at a local government. At, at the ministry, we have the accounting officer. 
we have heads of department who are directly managing the votes of these programs of government in that area. That's how budgets are made. Now, you have the internal auditors. The internal auditor is must, by law, is meant to check on every payment. But what is happening? The internal auditor, either they do their work, and either their work is ignored, or they collude. No, you just talked about the auditor general. The auditor general looks at the government programs and the money that has been disbursed and how it has been utilized, writes a report, sometimes a very voluminous report, that comes to parliament. In fact, the accountability committees of parliament are in charge of the opposition um, members of parliament. Uh, isn't that enough to check how money has been utilized? And somebody who has not done their part, then they should pay for that. The work of the Auditor General is an excellent and ex good work they are doing. However, I want to say this, to some extent, some work has not been done as expected. Because I can give that case as a case study. I have been, been, I've been to areas where some of the clean bills, according to the Auditor General, are good by paper, but me was gone on the ground. I found inconsistencies with what is on the audit report. That still call takes me back to what I say. What do you mean an inconsistency? <laughs> Maybe money has been used, but the work is shoddy? I can, yes. yes. I, I, exactly. I want to be, to be blunt and, and say that. Maybe the Auditor General's report has clear that the work done is good. Now me, who has come to go and look at physical accountability, I find that there is no work which was done, and yet money was spent. But the audit report is okay. That's why now I'm saying it takes back what do we need to do? That's why I'm challenging ourselves as leaders. Okay, you seem to be doing something good in looking, making sure there is physical accountability. But if it is only you who is doing it in a country of, 40, of more than 40 million people with so many projects of, in a budget of 48 trillion Uganda shillings, then it's a drop in the ocean. I want first again clear this notion. While my mandate gives me to look at the entire government in totality, I have sectors and my colleagues who had sectors. And my message has been how I wish all of us who had these sectors could go and check on what the money which is appropriate, appropriated to your respective sectors is doing. That would be an, a plus. And actually, if we concentrated, and I'm happy that the Prime Minister and each the President now have become very, very firm. If each minister is made to concentrate to check on what this man has done. And by the way, we are talking about a financial year. Like, for instance, I want to give an instance now. Now we are beginning a new financial year. If I was a minister in a sector, I would now, in the first quarter, I would now be checking on the money which we did in the what? In the last quarter. Are you getting me? Which I could call quarterly review performance. We planned this. Money came. What has it done? Come on. Are you suggesting that actually ministers are not doing what you're saying? You no, know, I want to say this. Some of them are doing what they are doing. They are meant to do. That's it. Because, because we <laughs> expect them to actually make a review, quarterly reviews of what has been done so that you can know what you're going to do. I want first again to... You expect some kind of performance review from the, from, from the employees. Kamara, I want, to, I want to put this on record again. One fact we must understand that not all of us are able to have quarterly review of what has been take, what has taken place in our respective sectors. Not at all. Number two, not all of us are able to verify and visit all the projects of what has been planned in a specific quarter in that respective That's sector. Number three, you, no, it's not. And if I was, in, I was indicting it, then I will not be here. These are the few challenges which must be corrected to give the citizens who vote us better services. And it is a reason... If people in departments, agencies, and the ministries of government cannot be able to review their work, how are they going to know how, where they are headed? But that's what I've told you today, and I want to put my message clearly. Our point and my point has been, what is on paper is must translate to what is physical. We have had quite many, many good things on paper. But me now has been in the field. I have also found many, many things which are not correct. However, I want first again to put this disclaimer. Government has done a lot. Some of these very sectors have done extremely well. And that's why now I am concentrating on the negative so that we make them be positives. I cannot begin now saying I concentrate more, but I will be happy also if I come here and you give me, can you give me the good areas where government has performed when in every sector I can be able to state for you. But now, as far as my work is concerned, I am interested in saying that 
of the 100% appropriation we make, can we get 95% positives? That's okay for me. So I've seen you in Bunyoro. I've seen you in many parts of Uganda. Yes. Uh, and actually some people are even scared to hear that uh, the Honorable Peter Gwang is, in, is around the district. Some people, <laughs> some people get scared. But apart from what we see, you actually very angry sometimes with the people you're dealing with at district level. I can feel the anger in your voice when you are talking with them. Beyond that, what happens? When you find shoddy work, maybe money misappropriated, and, and, and you lament with us, at the end of the day, what happens? First of all, for the record, I've been to Bunyoro, I've, I visited all the districts in Bunyoro, I've been to Busoga, all the districts in Busoga, I've been to Bugisu, all the districts in Bugisu, I've been to Sebei, I visited the three miners as Captura district with the municipality. I also made a handle it. Now I've come to Wakiso. I want to say this. Government has done quite a commendable job in most of the projects in those areas. However, there are projects where I've found a lot wanting, and that's why you see me sometimes angry. However, but if I had absolute power, which the laws do not allow, and I don't have them, some of these people actually maybe would be sent to, to, to prison without even going through trials. Because, like, for instance, you find a project that the government has given in maybe five, maybe say 10 billion for a project. Then you go and check on the project, how it has been implemented. You find that that project maybe has been paid all when the work is almost at 10 percent. And now how do you complete such a project? That's one area. So what has been happening and what have succeeded in, I really want to commend the, the, the cooperation with other state agencies. When I started doing this work, I started as myself in line with the mandate of monitoring. But I realized that there was criminality, there was a, too much corruption, there was too, I, can, I don't know which words again to express there. That's when I came back and said, you know, we must bring other state organs to look at how we deal with this impunity, which I found out. That's when I came in to move around with the, the CIDs, and I want to thank the IGP and the new uh, director's criminal investigation department, Dr. Magambo. I want to say I got CIDs. I also wanted to say that, no, I contacted the DPP, Madame Abodo. She was able to give me a team of prosecutors. Uh, I said, no, yes, now that we have the CIDs, we have the prosecutors, why don't we take these people head on? I monitor while other state organs are also now doing their work by finding from the field, this is a project, this was amount of money, it was mismanaged. <coughs> this was well, expeditious uh, 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 handling of cases for purpose of prosecution. prosecution. Yes, because now, it is, uh, yes, I can continue monitoring, but what would be the relevance of you monitoring? And actions are not taken against these criminals. That's one thing which I want to really say. My being in the field. So they are taken to court. They are taken tried. to court and tried and charged. Now, I also want again to put this thing, because this is what has been happening out there. We check on these projects. Some of these people go back to their offices. There's a difference between monitoring and investigation. When I monitor today, when these other set actors come in, they carry out an investigation. An investigation, for instance, I want to talk about an engineering project. You find according to the drawings and the BOQs, the drawings tell you that road was meant to be 50 kilo kilometers. You've carried out check. Did they grade a 50 kilometer road? Do you know what we've been finding out? The one of 50 kilometers, they might grade about 30. Not even grading, it's passing a grader. One, they, they have run it on one side, they have run it on the other side. But according to paper accountability, it is a 50. Second thing, according to the drawings, that road must be 10 or 7 meters wide. That's a standard road. But you know what they do? They put it 4 or 5 meters wide. But the payment has been sanctioned for 7 meters. So now, when it is an investigation, they first get the documents as per the drawings and the BOQs. They come to the field. They look at the, 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 the sizes, the length versus the width. Then, according to the BOQ, the drawings, how much maram was it meant to be put in that specific road? There also it must be made. So you must be having a team of technical people to they be able to do uh -huh. all these things. So all those things are done by, number one, engineers who work with the investigators to carry out that audit for prosecution. Because you can go to court with such a case. A judge will ask you, where is an engineering audit So, Honorable Minister, what you're saying, 
They are cheating on the width. Yes. They are cheating on the depth. Yes. They are cheating on the length. That is and it. they are cheating on the quality. That is it. And that is what is happening in our country. But I thank the president. And he has been very firm. And by the way, I want to say, this category of people are not many. They are few. Because my investigation and my findings are where there is a lot of total abuse of government resources it's in the in the works in, in so the what you are stating almost somebody can eat money for an entire road yeah, no that one has been happening i have been to wakiso recently they went they took me and showed me grass that the road had been worked on nothing you can go back to check on your footages you will find that i asked them where is the road grass that one what you have said is for me i've seen many I saw in Bunyoro, I saw in Busoga, I saw in... Somebody has eaten an entire road. Yes. Clean. This is not news now in our country. That's why I asked the fundamental question. How can someone eat up an entire road when we had all these numbers of leaders? Before you begin blaming, this government has done nothing. No, let, let me, let me, let me, <laughs> let me bring an example. Mm -hmm. There are things that are done and they think they embarrass the president. If he can get embarrassed. I'm going to give you an example of a, a huge project that was supposed to happen in eastern Uganda. The Sukuru phosphate plant. Yes. Worth about $600 million. Yes. And there was a lot of pomp in the launch of that, of that industry. Yes. What happened? What I can tell you this, you, if the president is always not, let me be honest, first I want to make a disclaimer. The love he has for this country, and it is going to take us ages to get a personality of his kind again. I am saying this, and I'll be reported in the future. Number two, he looks at the bigger picture of how to develop Uganda. But we, his appointees, and the civil servants, are the ones who have let him down most times. For instance, the, the question of Sukulu. He has come out clear to say crooks entered and worked with the, the investor. They duped the investor. They mismanaged the project. No wonder the inv investor ran bankrupt and ran I broke. remember the passion and the zeal and the <laughs> commitment that President Museveni had <laughs> over that Usukuru phosphate plant. Yes. And when you go there, I'm told now, almost there's nothing. And I wonder, why was all this time wasted? And on what was told was going to be the second or third biggest Ugandan investment. That is true. But the challenge is, Two things must be explained here. Number one, who are the people who followed next to work with this investor and to make this investor achieve the objective? The president even recently during the state of the nation, was it state of the nation? Yes. He did tell the country, I know some of you who mismanaged this project, who corrupted, got money from this investor, but I've not gotten a concrete evidence to prosecute you, which is true. He has information. Now, how do you blame him? No, you see, because at the end of the day, the Honorable Minister, the President is the chief executive of the country. And, and, there, are many, and there are many examples. Uh, right here, I, Nakawa Naguru. I think you know, Nakara, Nakawa Naguru that was supposed to be a satellite city and, and, and parliament's chart and a lot of money was wasted and time on trying to all allocate an, uh, that prime land to an investor. Up to now, it's just a wild part I within the city center. Kamara, I, I saw the president with his colleagues, President Paul Kagame and Salva Kiir, launching what was supposed to be the standard gauge railway. It is just there, a white, and a white elephant. Uh, yeah, yeah. These things, don't you get embarrassed? As First of all, I want to put it on record again. We cannot be able to blame the president in each and everything when we have been given responsibilities. For instance, I normally ask this question. Am I the first minister of economic monitoring? Haven't I had my colleagues there before? What I'm doing, wasn't it the same mandate? Sometimes we personalities make office, make offices. So if you've been given a responsibility, you should be blamed on your actions as a person, not to blame your appointing authority. It is you who has failed the appointing authority. That's why most times I put it on record that how I wish we could be sacked for non-performance. And most times I think he does that. Because at the end of the day, such projects, there should be an assessment. That's why I've told you what we need now is quarterly performance. You are given this work for this specific time. Why haven't you achieved it? I'm happy you're giving now, you're citing those examples. I wish we had such a system that time. This project was before you, how far? But you see, <laughs> part of that role is given to more than 500 leaders are called members of parliament. And one of their cardinal roles is the oversight function. And it, they come from these constituents where these projects are. 
Why can't members of parliament, and you as the NRM, you have the, oh, more than three quarters of that parliament. If everybody did their job, their oversight role, in fact, they would even make your job easier. And that's why it takes you back to what I began, Alarun, that our problems are how I wish all of us as leaders. That's why I want we, the elected leaders, most times at our level from being members of parliament, going downwards. How I wish each one of us does what we're meant to do. This country would be far. This project, what we're talking about, will not be there. Because, let's be honest, if there's a budget for an activity planned for, man has been sent, tell me, Kamara, why shouldn't it be done? It's my problem, and that's why I agree with you there that we leaders have a role. And I really want to repeat it here, that colleagues who are listening to me and who are viewing me out there, that oversight is our role. Can we spend time in our respective com constraints to check on what government has done and what has planned for us? That is the all. Just check on it. Is it done well? You know is why? it done badly? If it's you not, why after you've checked? It's because, it's because you have not allowed Uganda to have a thriving civic, civic engagement. If there was civic competence, a vibrant citizenry, these things would not happen. But if, you, if, if people were able to question, do their role, know their constitutional obligation, yes. but also check because they're the taxpayers, then maybe we wouldn't be where we are. Maybe there, there's lack of, the lack of civic co competence. Maybe I can also be able to say this. What has stopped the country, the, the citizens, from doing that? If they wanted to protest today yeah. over a road in uh, Wakiso, you'll come and tear that uh -huh. Listen, two things no matter what we do. Nobody denies you a right to protest. If you want to protest, can you not fight the authorities? As us, the citizens of this area, we have come out, who have seen that there should work been taking place here. The leaders, the offices are clear. The RDC, the DPC, for us, we want to come out and pros protest peacefully. What we need, can we be protected? So that when we are carrying no, out honorable, our protest... Honorable Peter Guang, don't say like you don't live in Uganda. I am, oh, I Honestly, am. if people wanted to protest today in, in Wakiso, over a poor road, you know they will not be allowed. No, that's, that's the reality, Kamara, they will not be allowed. Kamara, I also want you to listen to me. I am a leader, and I also live in Wakiso, I live in Uganda, even here. Two things. Really, if you have a genuine cause of protest on a poor road, for God's sake, why don't you notify the responsible officers? Because there are leaders in that locality. Where you're protesting from. Yeah, but you know this. The issue and number two, it's not about protesting. It's no. about pro sending a message that, please, as a people of this area, we are not satisfied. Because sometimes you might want to protest when a project has just started. Number two, why don't you even seek permission and find out that, by the way, this project here, what is the total cost? By the way, this project here, how was it meant to be done? How many years was it meant to be implemented? So for me, I want to put this clearly. Protests are, are allowed. However, can we work with authorities? Yes, but it should be your job, now that you have seen the magnitude of, of the challenge before you, that people should be empowered to ask the right questions, actually, to demand better. Actually, for me, what I really want to call upon the media, and I'm happy I'm here, how I wish we could really help us, like I want to commend NTV, You've really been following up the work I'm doing, and I'm happy the population is really very happy. I'm happy that the people are beginning to see the wrongs which are taking place in these areas. How I wish other radio stations could pick the same, other televisions would do the same. This is what will help empower the population. Number three, we leaders, how you've brought me here, how I wish you could also borrow. Can we have this minister? The budget has been passed. Can you come and tell the country what your ministry is doing? for this specific financial year. Can you come and tell the country what your minister has done for the last financial year? This is what would make the citizens be able to say, but honorable minister, you said, I remember you said this on this TV, but down here, what you said is not what is down here. So that you are able to be able to be checking on one another, and this is what the country needs. And I actually want again to repeat this. I call upon my colleagues. It is important that we leave our comfort zones and we follow up the projects, the money which is where it has gone down there. The other one is on, the, because there's been a co co complaint also, why are you only looking at the local government? Please, all programs of central government are implemented in the local government. There is no program of central government which is in space. 
So when I'm in those districts, I check on both the central government projects and the local government. And now, by the time I'm happy, I have been making reports to my prime minister, and she has started taking action. She's now beginning to call these sectors, this, this which Ogwang discovered in this area. Why hasn't it been implemented? This is what we needed yesterday. So there have been ministries and departments of government that were given money. Mm. At the end of the day, the job is not done and money is returned to the consolidated fund. There is something called lack of absorption capacity I don't understand. Mm. How can we even be borrowing money? And yet money is appropriated for a certain activity and that money is not utilized. Yet Ugandans are paying to the, to the donor, to the, to, the, to, to the person who has lent us money, the interest. And now, actually, our budget, the biggest part of the budget of this year, money will be going to servicing the debt. Sometimes the money we have borrowed and we have not used it. That problem has been there, Kamara. I don't want to say it has not been there. But also that comes from indiscipline, from still our technical people, who go ahead to begin planning for some of these projects, when in actual sense, they, they have not come up with the, the procurement plans on how to complete these programs. And it is true, there are projects this money which was borrowed, there are programs which have not started, there are programs which have not, which implementation is low. But also even it comes the question, the return of money. Sometimes also I want to be honest that the problem lies with the finance. They release money when it's towards the far end of the financial year. How can you for God's sake be able to go and cut out to, to implement a project within maybe one month? How? You find that Local entities even fear to begin carrying out a procurement plan because they are not sure whether money will come in time or not. But in all this, one thing we so want... So what causes that red tape? Because if you have borrowed the money, at least we know the money is there. What causes the red tape, I want to be honest with you, is again an aspect of corruption. Yeah, it is also there. So somebody maybe gets the money and puts on another account. It, 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 I know of one city. An inter an interest. I, I know of one city which I can be able because I soon I'm going to that area. A money for a roads project for working on the city road was put on a fixed deposit account to make interest. And so which city is that? I know that one I'm because if I alert them now because my work is intelligence led. I know because I have evidence. I don't want someone to take off like the way you've said. Now they hear the name of Guang, they take off before, as long as I write. Money is put on a fixed account? Yeah. To create, uh, have some interest? Some have some interest. I have that fact. I, I know of one city in this country, and there are many which have been doing that. It's only that I am happy that the work I'm doing is real intelligence coordinated. That's why you see, there's no way you see me going, and it's not factual. I go where it is factual, that's why I want to thank H.D. President. He has coordinated in my movements, real see that there are problems which we must face them head on to address the challenges of service delivery. And we are ready. By the way, this thing is not small, it is small. It, we are going to crush it, I can guarantee you, in the next two, three years. You will not get this problem again, because now they are beginning to feel the impact. But the problem <laughs> we are dealing with is the problem of values. Yes. The lack of values, the, the, the lack of integrity. Mm. I don't know how you're going to, cr to crush that because you're dealing with something that is, in, is more or less in people's mind. No, but uh, you see, our population first, the Kamara, I want you to, because you know this very well. Our country, once people begin to see certain people being prosecuted, family, the fear tends to be there and they stop doing those things. And like now, yeah, yeah, you've seen that. Uh, Recently, I'm sorry to mention this, you come from that very great uh, tourism city. You saw one of them appearing in court in that tourism city. Somebody uh, from, uh, from Toroko District? In Toroko District. Uh -huh, I it can't. is alleged an individual in Toroko, uh, you know, hired uh, people, he had the powers, he took the powers of public service. Yeah, that's true, of the District uh, Service Commission. And, and hired over 50 people if to it work? Is, it is 650. One individual? One individual. In, in, in a district? Yes, yeah, 650. That is the impunity we are talking about. Well, that's an issue in court, and uh, <laughs> maybe it may not be true. I, know, I don't want us to discuss that. <laughs> yeah. There's even Those another are still one. allegations. There, there, there are others, actually, which, of course, like you've correctly said, that I, I tend to avoid to discuss cases which, I, but I can tell you as of now, we have about 285 cases which are under investigation at various levels of civil but service. How does somebody, one individual, take the powers of the District Service Commission, hire over 600 people, for <laughs> heaven's sake, where are the other colleagues in the district? That is, you see, and that I find it very hard let even Let me to give you this laughter. It is a bad one, but it's a laughter. 
It has been happening. Uh, some of us at a colleague level, we are celebrating. But uh, the man is giving our people jobs. But in which manner? The laws are very clear. You have a district service commission with powers to recruit. In the absence of a district service commission, you have to get another service commission from a different district. Number two, you must work within the line of the wage bill. Finance gives indicative planning figures for the recruitment of the cadres whom you're lacking. However, for you, you go ahead, you, number one, you turn yourself to the district service commission. Number two, you begin to issue appointments letters, well, even knowing that you don't have a wage <coughs> bill for the specific recruitment you're doing. Number three, you're already putting the district in trouble because tomorrow, these people can sue the district having given me what? A job at the same time when I don't have a job. This is dangerous. Honorable Peter Guang, hold on your point there because you're going to take a break and on the spot, we'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Kamara. My guest tonight is Honorable Peter Ogwang, the Minister in Charge of Economic Monitoring. You know, sometimes a road is given, mm -hmm. money is borrowed, mm -hmm. money is appropriated. Mm -hmm. Midway when the road is, uh, construction starts, we hear it has told. Why? Somebody is demanding this. Somebody has not been compensated. And I'm asking myself, why do you have the contractor on the road before you actually give him the right of way? Yeah, first of all, I also want to acknowledge that as government, most times, we, sometimes we, we have contract ob obligations to make sure that, number one, we have to have, to have, to have money to co-fund, to pay off the, the people who are affected persons. That's what normally they call project affected persons. Number two, we must also, if it is World League Bank, there are some of those projects which they call co-funding. But in most cases, because of the challenges of the budget releases, these accounting officers find problems that while the, the borrowed money is there, meeting the side of the government is not be able, it's not able to, it's not is being met, and this is what affects the delay of the implementation of some of these projects. Then the other one, of course, also is the issues of compensation and specific evaluation. You find that a chief government valuer can come and try to value a project or land in a specific area, but the private person, the owner of land, says no. To my knowledge, my land is, if government value has given a valuation of maybe two billion, someone says, no, me I want 10 billion. So that haggling between, it takes a lot of time, that also affects the delay of the implementation of some of these projects. And this is, uh, these are the areas where I feel as government, we need to come up with a new plan, which I'm happy now it's taking force. If you have, uh, if you, have um, a a, you know, a co-funding kind of project, why don't you go ahead and secure the land and secure the road? The, co the project affected persons, are, uh, their interests are taken care of. Then the contractor can go on the road. Because I've heard in some case where government was losing, was it 300 million daily? Yes. 300 million daily is being lost because the contractor cannot move due to encumbrances is meeting on the road. First, I also How can we allow such a hemorrhage of public resources? It is twofold. Number one, there are some of the projects where we, I want to say, uh, we, I want to be put myself in that category. We were some of us who begin to look at the plans of government in terms of, like, for instance, now, I'm privileged that I can now say, I know in the next four, five years which projects of government specifically works are meant to be worked on. I move ahead, I go and acquire property or a land and along that area where the road is going to pass. Once I acquire that land, I move ahead to begin to demand a payment while working with the criminals in the same entity. There is that, that has also, that tendency has been there. A case in the point I can give a road between Kakumiro heading to Muvende, Muvende not, not Muvende, Kakumiro heading to Chikuve. There's a road there. Okay. We reached that area with, I was up, I moved with the, the, the team of Yonda headed by the AD who was checking on the oil road. We reached that area. We found a space of about 300 meters. One individual had stopped the project from taking place, and we were paying. What do you do? But this individual insisted he needed a certain amount of money. The government chief government valuer said, no, this amount of money we need to do to pay, actually, it has affected the, 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 the completion of that project. And at the end of the day, 
it is you and me who are taxpayers who pay the 300 million you're talking about. But then because the contractor... I understand there's something called compulsory acquisition. Yes, there's that thing of compulsory acquisition. But uh, the, the laws of the land, it, it protects the owner of the land. Whether you want compulsory acqu acqu acquire the property, you must first pay me before I leave my work. Yeah, but you're paying according to the government value. Exactly, but now the problem is where the So at the end of the day, there is where compulsory acquisition cannot happen even when you're doing something for the public good. Yes, it is there because what, is it, what happens normally is as long as me, the private owner, is not satisfied with the price the government value has given me, that project, court, has a, uh, court can stop the implementation of that project till you complete it. But suppose there was that provision that you go and deposit the money in courts of law and you go ahead with the work, with the works. But uh, as of now, I've not yet seen one which has succeeded in that manner. All programs, normally, all cases have to be disposed of before. I'm told some roads have corners, very sharp corners, just because an individual decided to say no. Oh yes, that's so true. So you, you, you go around? You go around. Um, even the Northern Bypass, uh, some time back, uh, they, they we had such a scenario where one individual had stopped the construction of the Northern Bypass for purposes of demanding much money. However, in all this, it's not all lost, and that's why I want to say that uh, this group is small, which has been uh, giving us problems in the country, and finally, I am happy I've exposed them, and we're beginning to zero our, our, our scope now to this specific group, and these are works what I can call, much of the money is on engineering works, construction of classrooms, constructions of roads, constructions of health centers, and then which other area. Then those, those are the... So, uh, oh, so now you're looking at those the structures. I, I want to give you an example, and I've given that example before on this very show. Uh, before Chogam, mm. I went and visited one of the buildings around in uh, Entebbe Grade B Hospital. Mm. And because they wanted to make it look good, so they put another new building in that very area so that it could cater maybe for increased uh, population, people wanted um, services. But when you look at some of the new structures within, and you compare it with the structure that was built in 1914, the walls do not compare. So what happened? Thank you. Why is it that buildings built in 1930 here in Kampala still look sold stronger and better than bu buildings that were put up two years back. Uh, Kamara, all this and it was supposed to have increased in every aspect, in skills, in machinery and, and, and understanding. Kamara, all this come because of uh, corruption in uh, short. Because number one, like I did tell you, we have an, a body called the National Building Review Board. That National Building Review Board is meant to, is, a, uh, is, an, <coughs> is an agency of government which is meant to undertake checking on all the buildings in this country, whether they meet the standard specifications on what they had been planned to do. For instance, I can give you a case study of some of the projects recently I've checked on. I can refer you to Entebbe Central Market. It is a project which is still under construction. I visited it when I was in Wakiso. What I found in that area was not pleasing at all. You've seen a crack from up to down. A project which is still under construction. I, they were, I am happy the, the, the team from the National Review Building Board was with me. I told them, have you ever come here? Have you ever tested the building, the materials being used, whether they, they meet the, co the, 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 the condition, the specification? They don't. That's point number one. Point number two is lack of following of the, the standard, the, the, the architectural plan and design. Simple. That's why you see they are telling you to use maybe a 12 millimeter iron bar. You're using six. What do you expect? Number three, that it's about the mixture, that you don't follow up the, 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 the standard measurements in line with the drawings which have been given. What do you expect? And all that comes out because of corruption. So now for <laughs> government and people like you, you are going, uh, going to monitor up to what level? <laughs> because it, what you're telling us, at almost at every level, there is somebody who is taking out something. At every level, at every level, somebody is taking out something on that money. What I want so where is your monitor going to start and what end? I, what I want to tell you that in each and everything, there must be one. Every, every journey begins with one step. I don't want to say I'm the first minister to monitor. <laughs> All ministers monitor. But... What we're beginning to, exposure number one is excellent. And we after we've been, we're, we, di, we are doing with exposure. Number two, we are now beginning to look at how do we improve on a bridging, seeing how to tighten 
And that's why now you see other government agencies are coming in. The National Building Review Board is now coming on board. Minister works as a department of compliance specifically for all projects. Let me give you an example <laughs> here in Kampala yes. on Namirembe Road. Somebody came up with an idea of, of constructing what they call the non-motorized transport corridor. Mm. whereby people should just walk and in the beginning it's a beautiful idea mm. you know with, with flowers and everything and you know people have no stress to walk there but go and see how it is being abused today in the heart of Kampala how you're going to be fighting with border borders and somebody isn't trying to squeeze in a vehicle yet it's supposed to be a non-motorized transport corridor Namenembe Road if the people cannot uh, follow the guidelines just in the heart of Kampala what do you expect in other parts of Uganda. No, but uh, in all these things, we, are, we begin with one step. And that's why now we have to come out and cut out a lot of awareness and sensitization. We have to guide the people now. If we must use some of the public facilities. And of course, we must take our politics out of some of these things. Because no, this is <coughs> where sometimes we also go wrong. You find that while we intend to create some sanity here, others are trying to politicize some of these initiatives. I, I don't know. Let me also give you an example. You are a minister and you are here yes. <coughs> in Kampala, and perhaps you can see how people, just an example to show you that we have lost values, we have lost integrity, we have no direction as a country. And I'm saying this because sometimes it makes me mad. See what happens on the roads in our Kampala, here in our Kampala city. How especially, uh, you know, big men in government, ministers and heads of departments and commissioners, how they have total disregard of the rules uh, of traffic that alone shows you how are people like that going to handle their offices outside of Kampala if here there is total disregard chaos I wa you're right chaos I don't want to say that you you because we are all here we all use these roads we are right that some of us have actually abused our powers which is not good enough for the public because we teach them bad manners I again want to call upon our ourselves and these are some of the issues which make the public not to respect what we tell them to do. That it is important that... No, the, pe the public will just learn from you, sir. That they will just learn from your colleagues. Yes, that's why I say that it's important that we, the public, act, actually we, those who hold offices and trust of the public, get to know that whatever actions you do, it has, a, it has an implication on the people whom we lead. Number two, I also again want to say this, that I think... Some of the offenses must be brought out clearly, and some of us should be used as case studies to purposes of being punished. And I'm happy these are issues which, for me, my immediate supervisor is the right of prime minister. I'm also going to report to her that some of these things we have been doing them, we really is be giving the implementers, particularly those who are charged with the responsibility. You, do you know, to, to uh, Honorable Minister, as a journalist, because sometimes we want to be the eyes and the ears, if we can, the people are actually tired and annoyed to see the total disregard of simple things as traffic rules by senior government officials in our city. That is true. I, I, Kamara, there I want to confess and confirm that most times we, the people in public offices at our level, are the ones who have done some bad work. And this is an area where I want to pledge before the show and I know my bosses will be able to watch this show. It is important that I am also not a big person. If I had the powers, I would have already put it in a black and white. <laughs> but it is important that my bosses are, and, and, are and, and, be, and before <laughs> I leave that, okay, before I even leave, leave that point, yeah. uh, surprisingly, yeah. the minister in charge of transport and his deputy, and the minister, uh, uh, deputy minister of internal affairs, both of them have been um, um, CDFs, but they are most obedient people on the road. How, how can, can your colleagues learn from General Katumba Wamala, a minister, the senior cabinet minister, former chief of defense forces, former inspe did. inspector general of police, mm -hmm. but he, got the, he who has been threatened before but in the road, but the man is going to follow the rules. But the the general Muhozi, former chief of defense forces, minister of state for internal affairs, but the man will be with us. But so what makes other colleagues of, your, of yours feel so big? Kamara, let me tell you, before you go to those comrades, how I wish we could learn from our president. You uh, know, he has the right of way, at least that one we understand. Yes, first of all, before we go to right of way. But look at his humility. With due respect. Look at his, his humane. Look at his being humble. Look at, unfortunately, we, I don't know, we seem to be in a hurry. And I want to say, including myself, 
Because sometimes there are certain things which we do. But before you do such things, let's go back and ask. That comes now to those comrades, see my senior comrades you talked about. That lot of people, by the way, don't talk about General Katumba alone. There are many. I'm just giving you two yes, examples you, that I've seen. Even when you talk about General Saleh, Gen get Ive, General Ivan Coretta, it, no, that, that club, they are there. It, they see you. You feel ashamed. They, because they understand civilian authority. They understand, but say, no, 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 sir, no, no. But uh, we who feel we have arrived, oh, we, we feel everything mm. is, we are now everything. So it is one thing which, of course, I, it's, I'm not in national guidance anymore, <laughs> but uh, these are matters actually which may be okay. the um, country really needs so, to So now to we've just passed the budget, Honorable Minister, yes. and I'm sure a lot more money has been appropriated to different sectors. But what bothers me is to find that the biggest chunk of the money is going to service the date where we need to borrow and when the countries borrow. Unfortunately, money is not effectively utilized. But also a big chunk of money is going for recurrent expenditure. Do you, you, do you have some confidence that the 48 trillion budget really will cause some change? It will because In now I'm, I'm, I'm very confident because now we are tightening the grip on two folds. On the area of corruption, which I'm happy the Minister of Local, the Minister of Finance, and of course the HD President, Delegated Authority, the Minister of Finance, was able to see that this time around, even if you go and check in the previous budget, I think more money has been given this time around on areas of fighting corruption and when trying to see how we can be able to, that area we've given quite more money. Number two, I'm also happy that there are areas which, in my opinion, I feel more revenue, areas of collection of new revenue, more money, has not been exploited because I found this in local governments. For instance, I was in Mbale city. You know Mbale market as a government build a, got a loan to build a central market in Mbale. According to the money which was being declared in Mbale city, they were declaring one, one million per month for a 26 billion market. I asked them for God's sake, you want to tell me this market only collects one million? How many people are in the market? How many stalls are in the market? I said, the good thing, that's why I'm happy with my work. I said, let's walk. I walked with the municipal authorities, the city authorities of Bali, to the market. I began asking people, how much do you pay? <coughs> oh, I pay 200,000 a stall. I pay 300,000. Those who are on the open spaces, I pay 10,000. Do you know, the, after my living in Bali, after I tightened the group, as of now, I can speak without fear, because these are the records. Mbale Central Market collects 76 million, from 1 million to 76 million. Now, I'm happy also, Minister of Local Government has brought in a system of automating all Central Market's collections. That already was a source which had been underdeclared. That man has been eaten, but now, that's why I have hope that the Gulu market is collecting more money. Now, how I wish the government, which I'm happy now that government is automating the collection of, local, of revenue, is going to improve on revenue collection. And this will help us, number one, increase our, our, our revenue collections in the country. Number two, that money will help us to pay the, the debt you're talking about of 17 trillion, which is within the budget. But I want to say this, in the next two, three years, we are going to see reduction on the debt collection, on the debt. And that will be able to help us have more money to put into implementation of projects. However, also, most of this money which has been put in, which were borrowed of recent, has been doing a lot of work in infrastructure development, which I'm sure which is going to help us per the economy. Like now you talk about Karoma is almost coming, about 600 megawatts. Talk about Simba, I think about how many is Simba, even Simba about 100 something. A year I, I know that Karoma Dam was started. Uh, before you became Minister of, S of State in charge of monitoring. Yes. And, and uh, probably this has been Uganda's biggest project. Yes, that's In true. terms of, uh, of the volume of money involved. Yes. But you know it is so much behind the schedule. Yes, that's true. That's so much. And, 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 and of course, before you came in, I, I had allegations of Kuraxia, of Shodi work and stuff like that, wrong cables and stuff like that. And we wonder. I wonder. You have somebody who is supposed to be a professional monitoring the activities of people who are doing the, the construction. So where were they when some of these things happened? And, and because if it wasn't for some of those technical hitches, probably by now, Karuma would be you know, giving us power. What I want to confirm if I'm, I need to cross but what I know action was taken against some of the supervisors of that project. They were
taken off, they were sacked. Number two, you remember very well the president appointed engineer Badu Chigundu to head a team of technical experts to go and work closely with the contractor. And most of the defects which had been identified by that time were corrected. As of now, I'm told the project is now under test. And uh, easy, everything is moving on well. And we expect the HED president will be able officially to commission that project for the country. And I'm happy that uh, I was in Karuma. Of course, like now what I do, such a project, I can't go there alone. I have to go with experts because they are the ones who help me to look at what, wha like talk about time schedules. There has been delays, true. But what caused the delays? It was only some work which was not being done well. And of course, I want to ask fellow Ugandans, specifically our civil servants who work for our country, help us and love your country. A contractor from somewhere cannot be the one to tell you that he will come and love your country more than you, the owner of the home. It's like me and you. Nobody can love your home more than you. That's it. These are friends who have come to do business. The pub, for me, a businessman, I look at profits. As long as I have an avenue where profits maximization can be got from your laxity, I will take that route. That's what happens in the current business world today. So now, <laughs> have they, because at one point there was a problem of power ev evacuation line from Karuma to all wherever it's supposed to be. Yes. Because that, that was an issue also. That's true. And, and I'm thinking, because you subdivided, you know, you got electricity board and created so many, maybe that was <laughs> another, is another issue. You know, you, you have generation, you have transmission, you have distribution, you know, have all these things. Of at, course. At the end of the day. It is uh, true. The, 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 the lines have been worked on. That one I want to confirm. And you can see the, if you drive through that northern axis, you will find a line from Karuma getting to Kawanda. And there's a line even which is going up to West Nile, it's being worked on. Even the Yago one, there's a line which is being worked on. And now, it is true you're talking about, we have about three companies, which is distribution, generation, and what? And, uh, and, uh, and uh, yes, they're about two. Mm -hmm. Transmission. And trans yeah. There are three, actually. So these three companies, according to the rationalization, I need to recall very well, I think one company, is they are meant to merge it to one. If I want, I don't want to, but what I know, if I looked at the rationalization clearly, we are going to have one. So we, we have power, yes? You're monitoring that uh, work is going on well, but again, we're paying through the nose. When you compare us with other uh, countries in the region, you wonder why. Um, in fact, we are even paying, like, uh, you know, for now I'm told we have even surplus power. Right? That's what I hear. The yes. president said that we have surplus. Yes. But we are paying for that surplus, for that redundant power. It we're not using it, but we are paying for it. Kamara. Isn't that the case? Let, let me be honest with you. I want to, you rather have surplus than have load shedding. And we have been there before. Now, while it is true we are playing for surplus, we, the main reason why you see the president now coming out that can we have the power which goes to the industries and factories get back to five megawatts. Because we must utilize this power for production. We must utilize this power to help us create jobs. Lower the courts so that we are able to move. The entire Africa, by that the president has been giving us that statistic, which of course is off-road. How much power is Africa producing as of now? It's little. So we were in 600, we are talking about now power. You heard him yesterday. There's a power center in Eastern DRC. For market, power is going to South Sudan. For market. How many jobs are we going to create out of that? For him, he's looking at our head. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> Honorable Minister in charge of monitoring, why is it that our projects seem to be more exorbitant than other government projects in the region? For example, the Karuma Power Dam, which is supposed to give us 600 megawatts, we are paying close to $2 billion? I want to say this. But, 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 the, in the, but the, the, the Grand Renaissance Dam of Ethiopia, which is supposed to give 6,000 megawatts is, 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 is more that w is within the range almost of Karuma. I want to address you to the what we call pre-financing. Pre-financing is where these companies use their own money. Then, as we government begin to pay them, they are not like projects when we have our own money ready, we use them. Some of those projects you're quoting, the government of Ethiopia might be having its own money ready and they go and get a contractor, they come up with the, the plan on how to build that power generation, go that hydroelectric power dam. Unlike us here, some of this, it's either borrowed money, that's point number one, 
which is a bit expensive. Some of the projects, roads or even tour dams, are on pre-financing arrangement. A contractor puts in own money. So that is also, it is not as the, for the ones where you have money. So I want us to, for me, I really want to move on a point that uh, I acknowledge that they're expensive. Yeah, you know <laughs> that we are paying more. Yes. We are paying more yes. for our projects. Yes. As compared to other projects. Uh, but areas. for two areas, that's what I've told you, one of them, let's, it is, might be because of the pre-financing arrangement, which you have actually recommended. I am happy even the team from Inso Works, Yundra, have come out. It's important we reduce on the pre-financing of some of the project roads. They're expensive. We rather come up with our plans, look at our revenue base, work within finishing those roads in line with what we collect every financial year. However, most times, I am in, I'm among those. For instance, uh, I had a bad road from Soroti to Katakwe to, to Moroto. I was an interested party. Said, but when is government going to work on this road? When is government? So for me, when opportunity comes that uh, a company like CCC, which worked on the road, said, I have the money ready. Please, you will pay me in the next 10, five years. Let me work on the road. I ran for it. At that time, I don't say talk about the project is going to be more expensive. For me, I, all I want to see is the road. What I want to say, however expensive they are, how I wish they could be doing quality work. This is my point of reference. And this is why the country must really help us. And this is why our technical people must take a lot of time. That uh, this is a finance project. Please favorize it to a level that if it is 15 years project lifespan, can we have 15 years? But sometimes some of the projects, the lifespan is 15 years. You begin to see a crack, not even when it has been handed over. And uh, this, uh, I've seen them in uh, some cases uh, somewhere. Uh, uh, Minister, Mr. Minister in charge of monitoring, there has been, a, there was a project, I think, in Kasese, in Kilembe Mines, where you brought in a company called Hima Tibet. Yes. Uh, and uh, to revamp that copper mine industry. At the end of the day, it looks like nothing has happened. Uh, nothing happened. I don't know what, ha what became of that. And it was another grand project to revive it. And nothing came out of it. First, I want to commend my sister, the Minister of State for Investment. That Tibet Kilembe Copper project was cancelled because the contractor did not have the capacity. They had lied before government that they had capacity to revive, to revamp and revive that project. But when they were given the, pro the, the, the project time line, they failed. And it's something called due diligence. In the, the, let me, let why, why <laughs> we government should, how you should have known which people you are dealing with. Let me tell you, all these friends of ours who are good investors come out and all this is undertaken. But when it reaches to the actual financing and implementation of the projects, that's when they begin to what? To fumble. And most times that's how they begin to fail. And now when we begin to get serious, that's what I'm saying. In the areas where you have serious ministers, serious supervisors, they arrest the situation before it is too late. And I want to confirm that Tibet was cancelled. Government came out and cancelled the, 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 the company, the Tibet issue. And I'm happy now, government is, I think, has again identified another contractor, another investor, which is ready to invest in that Tibet Kilembe mine in Ikasese. That one, it's, it's taking place. So but you have a weakness as a government, so because there are many examples of that nature where you engage somebody before you know it that somebody has no capacity no uh, yeah there might be many but for yeah, me the other day i saw your colleagues going to monitor the the, the, the specialized hospital uh, Boa. that one i want to be honest also that uh, first of all like the president has always said number one our friend there has been a specialist in building hospitals and by the way there's a project which he undertook in Entebbe, which is a good project now, this one was a second project, which she told the president and told the country that she was going to work on it. And I want to confirm this. Of course, she has found challenges in the implementation of the whole project. Um, parliament, of course, has even not given money for this coming financial year. So as we speak, there's no money for that project. The money had been earmarked, but uh, parliament in its wisdom, like you know, powers of appropriation lie with before parliament. They have removed the money. I also want to say this, that we checked on the way the project was being moved, and my sister, the Minister of Health, and our technical people had already seen a red line somewhere, but that is being handled at okay. our level, as executive level. I just want to thank you, but before we conclude, um, there's something that uh, my producer just reminded me. 
the 40 million money that members of parliament are apparently have received? <laughs> have you received yours? <laughs> First what is all, that for? First of all, I, I am happy you've asked me that question. If there are people who have suffered so much, and the most difficult job now is members I of I woke parliament. up to the headlines today, newspaper headlines, members of parliament received uh, 40 million. First of all, for what? I want to put this on record. This is June. Am I clear? Is yes. this June? Yes. I am paid my end of the year, my gratuity. Which money goes to my account? It is 42 million. I'm speaking as a member of parliament. It doesn't come by cash. It goes to my account. I want to challenge those who are blackmailing the image of parliament that have been paid 40 million. Let them explain who gave them the money. For me, I've told the country that I am paid my gratuity, which is cut every year, every month, to raise 42 million. I have received that one. Yes, because this is June. That one I want to say it before public. But the, the 40, which they claim I've read, who is giving out the 40 million? There's a problem in our parliament. And this is there, why there are some <laughs> There are some <laughs> members of parliament, uh, I'm, I'm going to cross check again, yes. who seem to have said they've received the 40 million. That's and why there are those who are saying, they are, they are saying, no, we are not going to take this. No, but for me, I so want that's to why. And I woke up to the newspaper headlines talking of 40 million. And I You're a member of parliament yes, and a so minister. I'm now, I'm now answering as a member of parliament and a minister at the same time. Who are the people speaking? If it is our friends, it's not news. They will always try to portray NRM as one which does this all these schemes. But even them, they must be honest to themselves. Who gives you the 40 million? I have a declared. I'm actually going to look for Honorable Peter Gwanga's pay slip and see yes, for whether, the, whether, for the whether it reached 80 million, yeah, for whether the, it reached 80 million this, this June. For the 42 million I have received because it is my entitlement every month, gratuity, I, I, it is Your salary is gratuity. It, right. it is, there are two options here. I want to explain to you. Which, of course, again, is good for the country. Mm -hmm. A member of parliament, his gross salary payment is 11.2 million. So they pay tax, pay as you earn, and then they take away this little money. That gratuity is, comp is computed at the end of the year. Okay. They lump it, they give you. So that is what I've received plus my salary. So if my salary... Oh, so so, so this, is, this is where the, the devil's in the detail. Hmm. They have received a gratuity of 40 million. Yes. The of you. Okay, <laughs> our time, unfortunately, <laughs> our time is actually... <laughs> Uh, well, but at least today, this, this month you received 40 million more than usual. No, 42. Is 42 million more than usual. If my is you received 42 I, I million want, more I, than usual. I want you to put it clearly. The 42 million is my gratuity. But how do you get gratuity when you're still... Yes, they, they computed and they pay me per end of the year. Every year I, I get... I want it. to thank you so much. <laughs> uh, in, in one second, on yes. two seconds, you're parting short. First of all, of course, I want to thank NTV for giving the opportunity to come and speak to the, the country on the work I've done. I want to thank my appointing authority that I'm happy deployed me to be where I am. I'm continuing to work. And to my colleagues, you've heard from the people of Uganda, I want to call upon us to go and check on the projects of our respective ministries. I thank you so, so much. Thank you so much, Honorable Peter Grang, Minister of State in charge of economic monitoring. You have seen him maybe in uh, areas or districts around uh, where you stay uh, doing his work, and I think he's doing a commendable job. Um, sometimes the world works on perception, the perception we get that he's doing a good job. Let us also ask them the right question, De demand better because we, the people of Uganda, deserve better. Good night and God bless Uganda.